The clavicle is a tubular S-shaped bone that forms the anterior portion of the shoulder girdle and sits directly above the first rib. When viewed from the superior aspect, the medial two-thirds, over here, is convex anteriorly and the lateral one-third is concave anteriorly. This medial end articulates with the manubrium of the sternum as well as the first costal cartilage form forming the sternoclavicular joint and the lateral portion articulates with the acromial process of the scapula forming the acromial clavicular joint. A few interesting facts about the clavicle are that it's the most commonly fractured long bone in the body and the area where the most fractures occur are at this junction between the medial two-thirds and the lateral one-third and the reason for that is because at this junction there are no muscular attachments. Another interesting fact is that this bone undergoes both endochondral and intramembranous ossification. And also interesting is that although it's classified as a long bone, it lacks a medullary cavity. Now, how do you tell a right clavicle from a left clavicle? If you go through many different anatomy textbooks, different authors will give you different ways of finding out if it's a right versus a left. But what I found is a very simple three-step process. Number one is, you, you can easily identify which is a medial end and which is a lateral end. And the way you do that is because you know the medial side, it takes up two-thirds of the bone. So in any anatomy textbook you read, they'll say medial two-thirds and the lateral one-third. And that's kind of generally how they're going to divide the bone. So you have the medial two-thirds, so that will be the longer portion. And then you have the lateral one-third. So of course, that will make this the medial end and that will make this the lateral end. So number one, you already know where is medial because that's the medial two-thirds and you know where is lateral because this is the lateral one-third. So that's number one. Number two, you know that when you look at it from superior to inferior, the medial two-thirds is convex anteriorly. So if this part is convex, then you know this longer part is facing anterior, then you know that this is posterior right here. So this will be anterior because the anterior portion is convex and it faces this way. And this makes this portion here posterior. So right away you know this is medial and this is anterior. But that still doesn't tell us if it's a right or a left. And the easiest way to do it is you compare the superior aspect from the inferior aspect. Now right away you're going to notice something really unique. The superior aspect, which is subcutaneous and easily palpable even on yourself, is generally smooth. So this is generally a smooth surface, right? And if you compare that to the inferior aspect, you're going to see several areas that are rough and irregular. And these are for attachments of various ligaments. So the easiest way to do it is you know this is your medial two-thirds right here, which makes this the medial end or your sternal end as some textbooks call it, sternal end, acromial end. So here's your sternal end. This is your medial aspect, so you know this is anterior. And then if you flip the bone over, you'll see that this area is rough. So this has to face down or inferior, and this has to face up. So let's go through it once again. Here's medial, here's anterior, making this posterior. Smooth surface is superior and the irregular surface is inferior. Now, different anatomy textbooks will tell you to look for different tubercles, and they'll say those tubercles face inferior, but really, all they're really telling you is just wherever it looks rough, that's inferior. So if you put this back in anatomical pos position, inferior is a rough surface facing down, medial two-thirds faces anterior, and this is your medial end right here. So you know we have a right clavicle. And it's really that easy to, to, to determine the right versus the left. Again, here's medial. Smooth surface is superior. Rough surface is inferior. Medial two-thirds, convex anteriorly. And that's it. We have a right clavicle. The medial end forms a sternoclavicular joint, which is a synovial double plane joint. And it consists of two articulations. And these are between the sternal end of the clavicle and the manubrium and that's this larger facet over here. You also have a smaller facet located more inferiorly and that's where the first costal cartilage. 
The capsule of the joint is reinforced by the sternoclavicular ligament, and the accessory ligament that further supports the joint is a costal clavicular ligament. So again, you have two articulations, a larger one for the manubrium, and a smaller one inferiorly for the first costal cartilage, and you have two ligaments. You have the sternoclavicular ligament and the costal clavicular ligament. The media two-thirds is known as the prismatic portion and it is circular in cross-section. It contains three borders that form three surfaces. The rugosity for the pectoralis major is located along the anterior border. The sternocladoid mastoid attaches to the superior border. And the deep cervical fascia attaches to the posterior border. The anterior surface is covered by the platysma muscle and the posterior surface provides attachment for the sternohyoid muscle and on the inferior surface near the mid shaft is a subclavian sulcus which provides attachment for the subclavius muscle. Something interesting is that although the clavicle is very commonly fractured the subclavian vessels are usually not injured and that's because they're protected by the subclavius muscle. Also found on the inferior surface of the medial two-thirds is the costal clavicular tuberosity, which is a variable trait. A variable trait means that it's not present in all people, and when it is present, it can take on different forms. So for some people, this will be a raised rough area. For other people, it will be a raised smooth area. And for some people, it won't be present at all. And then other people, it'll be a hollow, smooth area. And in this individual, this person has a hollow, depressed, rough area. And so why is that important? It becomes important in terms of radiology, especially when you look at AP radiographs of the chest, in which the clavicle is visualized. And sometimes when you see a hollow depression, radiologists will term that as a rhomboid fossa. And the reason they call it the rhomboid fossa is that in some anatomy textbooks, your costal clavicular ligament is referred to as a rhomboid ligament. So anyway, when you see this rhomboid fossa, it will look like this depression that's located on the inferior medial aspect of the clavicle. And so at first glance, it looks like a pathology. So in some articles, they'll describe it as an AVN or avascular necrosis. Other radiologists would describe it, it looks similar to osteomyelitis. Some have even said it looks like an apical numeral thorax. So apical numeral thorax, AVN, osteomyelitis, these are all pathologies. However, it's important to know that in some people, it's not necessarily a pathology if you see this, it's just a normal anatomical variant. The lateral one-third is concave anteriorly and flat in cross-section. It consists of two borders and two surfaces, an anterior border and a posterior border as well as a superior surface and an inferior surface. The rugosity for the deltoid muscle is located along the anterior border of the superior surface and then the rugosity for the trapezius muscle is located along the posterior border of the superior surface. The inferior surface contains a rough eminence at its posterior aspect and this is called the coracoid tuberosity. It's also known as a conoid tuberosity and this gives attachment to the conoid ligament. The reason why it's called the conoid tuberosity as well as the coracoid tuberosity is because a conoid ligament attaches to the coracoid process of the scapula. Now beginning at the tuberosity there is an oblique ridge that runs lateral and this is known as the trapezoid ridge and this gives attachment to the trapezoid ligament. Now keep in mind that the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament together make the coracoclavicular ligament which is important because in some anatomy textbooks the authors will simply say that the coracoclavicular ligament attaches to the inferior surface of the lateral one-third of the clavicle. In other anatomy textbooks the authors will say the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament attached to the inferior surface of the lateral one-third of the clavicle. And the authors are going to assume that these, you know that these terms are interchangeable. So anytime you see the term coracoclavicular ligament, right away in your mind you should know that the coracoclavicular ligament 
consist of the coenoid and the trapezoid. Similarly, if you see in the same sentence the coenoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament, you should know that together these form your coracoclavicular ligament. The lateral end is known as the acromial extremity. It contains the acromial facet, which articulates with the acromion to form the acromioclavicular joint. The capsule of the joint is reinforced by the superior and inferior acromioclavicular ligaments, and the accessory ligament that further supports the joint is a coracoclavicular ligament. Let's review the muscular attachments. The pectoralis major attaches to the anterior border of the medial two-thirds, and the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle attaches to the superior border. And on the posterior surface of the medial two-thirds is the attachment for your sternohyoid muscle. And on the inferior surface along the mid shaft is the attachment for the subclavius muscle. And finally, on the superior surface of your lateral one-third along the anterior aspect is the rugosities for the deltoid muscle and on the posterior aspect of the superior surface is for the trapezius muscle.